So a while back, at the request of a viewer, I made a video on how to make and attach nooses to a BC hawk trap. Well, the video got a lot of views, but I also got several alerts that the bad audio and video quality was making it hard to follow. So here's our retake. So what most falconers use to, to make nooses for a falconry trap is monofilament fishing line. Um, 20 pound test is suffice for anything around the size of a red tail. And um, I actually like to use the green colored string because it makes the trap a little more camouflage. The other option for nooses that many falconers use is braided fishing string. Um, this string is thinner and a lot stronger. There are some benefits and there are some drawbacks to using this. For this video, we'll be covering both, but we'll be focusing on our monofilament. The only other thing you'll really need is a pair of scissors. So what we're gonna start with is a piece of string about a foot long. It does not have to be exactly a foot because that'd be a waste of time measuring out each one with the ruler. So we're gonna guess on the size of the foot and then judging by how big or small our nooses are, we can always adjust the size of the string later. To form the base for the knot, we're gonna attach our string to the trap. To do this, we'll insert it through two of these squares in the wire mesh across an intersection diagonally. From there, we are going to tie it. I use a double granny knot followed by another granny knot. And that's gonna be about halfway through your string so you'll have two halves of equal length remaining on either side of this knot. So then I take it and I go back across diagonally the other way with one of the strings and I simply pull it through itself twice to form another simple knot diagonally across the first knot. This just makes a very secure bond and a good platform for the noose to stand up straight off of. To quickly calculate where the halfway point in is my string before I tie my knot, I just draw the string up, hold them tip to tip, and then drop one down about an inch. With the longer end of the string that's hanging off, you're going to go about an inch away or about across two squares to form another knot which is going to create two nooses out of one string. So we just go across a couple squares, about an inch, create our knot, and we're going to draw that very tight. Now what this does is it creates a double hold for the noose which then makes it able to take a lot more force as the hawk tries to get free and it also allows us to create two nooses. So now we are going to form our noose. Don't worry if you get lost, we'll provide a bigger demonstration after. What we're going to do is form a loop by crossing the string around itself, drawing it over, and creating a sort of circle. If you've ever seen how a lariat or a lasso works, it's just like this. So now what we've got is this little circle that can move up and down the string. So we're just going to tighten this. There are many different variations to these nooses. However, this one has seemed to work very well for me and probably will for you as well. To make it stronger, we simply tie another knot because fishing string, unless it has a firm knot, tends to just come apart. So what we do is create another knot, tighten it as best we can, and then do a little test by drawing it down and then pulling it. So now I just created a noose and caught my finger. Now we're going to do a bigger demonstration. To form a noose in more basic form, we're gonna imagine this larger string is our fishing string. Now this would be the base coming off here. So what we're going to do is twist the string around itself and we're going to create a loop like that and then we're going to pull the tip back around and through. You're going to snug it down a little bit, not too tight or it won't close and then because fishing string will pop back open what we're going to do is do another knot by following that same loop and pull snug 
So now that we've finished our noose and tested it a few times, making sure the knot is strong, we're going to trim off this excess string. Cut it about a centimeter from the knot and then repeat your noose tying process with the other string. Always remember and keep in consideration what you are trapping for. Red tails take nooses about this size, but if you're looking to catch a kestrel, then you should probably have an entirely different trap with much smaller nooses. If you make your noose too big, you can also risk catching the bird around the neck and potentially injuring it, or around the leg or something else. So always just keep in mind the size of your noose and try not to keep them too big if you can avoid it. And about this size is good. Always snug them down at the base when you're done. Maybe test them and then bring them back down. You want your nooses to stand up tall as that's how they'll have the best chance of snagging the hawk's foot. So now we're going to trim the extra. And now that we know our string size was correct, we're going to go ahead and start cutting all the rest of our string for our trap. I'd also just like to point out some pros and cons between braided and monofilament string. Now, while both nooses will close quickly around the hawk's toes, it seems like monofilament just likes to snap shut a little faster. However, braided locks tighter, so you have less chance of the hawk's toes slipping out because the knot grips tighter. Now this is both good and bad. While it will keep the hawk from getting away, it's harder to get your nooses off when you approach the bird. While braided string is stronger and more resistant to breaking, it's also a lot harder to work with, especially for a beginner or for someone with big fingers. So many falconers tend to just stick with monofilament. Another problem with braided string is that after you've been trapping for a few weeks, the nooses are really like to lay down or flop over and become limp. This can be avoided by constantly propping them up and pulling them tight as you should do before every throw. However, for most people, it's simpler to just stick with monofilament. They both have their advantages, and my method is, of course, to use them together, but always consider the words of your sponsor and take his advice. So, as I said, what I like to do is mingle in a few braided nooses along with my monofilament nooses. Um, now, every, each time you tie a new noose on, you're going to want to move about an inch away and your nooses are going to be kind of spaced out. You'll see at the end of the video. <clears throat> Always check. And boom. You can see how much tighter braided gets into the knot. However, it also is harder to get through these squares. This is what the completed BC should look like. You can see how I've got the nooses spread out with about an inch of space between each one of them. Too many nooses creates a problem because as the hawk's toes are going through these nooses, it's getting pulled on from several different angles, greatly reducing the way in which the noose is closed. Too few also reduces the chance of catching the hawk because it's harder for its toes to find a noose.